Good to see you again. It seems like every time I talk to you, there's a new crisis. Last time it was after the assassination attempt. Now you're under house arrest. You're back in court tomorrow. Um, how are you doing? Well, as I'll say, my life is uh, pretty exciting. You never know what's going to happen the next day. It certainly is. It's certainly unpredictable. Many would think very dangerous in many different ways for you. Uh, just before I came on air today, you've now been, in addition to the 150 uh, different violence and corruption charges that you're facing, they've now put your name against this uh, murder of a lawyer who was uh, pressing for a case against you for sedition, uh, who was killed on Tuesday by four gunmen. What is your response to that? Piers, look, this case was so frivolous that it didn't even register on my radar out of the 150 cases. So uh, this guy got killed. The family claimed it was a family feud. The police went over uh, to the house, picked up the son of this guy, kept him in police station for eight hours, and then he changed and said that I'd had him killed. And the case is so irrelevant that, you know, why would I, why would I kill anyone? Well, why would I kill a lawyer in a case that is, it's one of the least significant cases out of the 150? I mean, the, the fact is this man was killed on Tuesday. The fact is he obviously, he was uh, taking you on with a legal challenge relating to alleged sedition. But just to be clear, you had nothing to do with what happened or these gunmen who killed him. Piers, I don't even know the name of this guy. It's Abdul uh, Razak. Again, I repeat, it, it, it is uh, the case didn't even, didn't even register on my on my radar. O of course, I had nothing to do with it. Everyone knows I had nothing to do with it. People in his family know that I had nothing to do with it. The other charges, Imran, is 150 of them. It's a huge amount. Obviously, if you're convicted of this, you'll go to prison, presumably, for a long period of time. What do you feel about this? I mean, you're back in court tomorrow. You'll just, they'll decide whether you can go back home under house arrest or presumably whether you will be incarcerated. What is your general view about what is happening to you? I'm, I have 17 bail cases tomorrow. <clears throat> Chances are all, all the judge has to say is that one of the bails, he refuses to give me bail and I go to jail. So I'm mentally prepared. But, you know... Bears, what is happening in Pakistan, we are back to the dark ages. I mean, there's no rule of law left here. Uh, if you, what, what has been happening to my party, 10,000 of our workers are in jail and they, the, the judges give them relief and they, the police picks them up in another case. So it is the law of the jungle right now. I mean, it's never happened in this country before. Your critics, your enemies, they say you're getting what you did to others in the sense that the military turned on you, but to start with, you had them on your side, that you, when you came into office, were putting people in prison who shouldn't have been with trumped-up charges and so on. You've heard this charge against you. What is your response to that? Piers, do you know, do you know something? First of all, this has never happened in our history. What is happening right now? even during martial laws when there were military dictators, this sort of crackdown has never happened. I mean, you don't put 10,000 worker people in jail and, and then not pro-journalist, one of our best investigative journalists has been missing for 20 days. And, and the judges keep asking him to come, bring him to court, the government refuses. So look, first of all, it's never happened, even in military dictatorship, what is happening now. But secondly, do you know, 95% of the cases against the opposition, I inherited. They were from, from the previous governments. In fact, when they were in power, uh, there were only 5% of the cases. And it was nothing like what is going on now. There was no, no question of any political victimization. There were ongoing cases. And, um, you know, the judiciary was free. The media was free. Uh, this sort of thing has, I, I repeat, even in General Musharraf's martial law, nothing like this ever happened. What, what will happen, Imran, if, as you say, it's all a, a stitch-up, 
and you're a victim of, of unprecedented systemic abuse by the, the powers that be now, if you end up going to jail for a long period of time, what will happen to you, to your party, to the movement, to all of it? Look, Piers, this today, the, why is this happening? This is happening because my party, PTI, is now the largest party in Pakistan's history. I mean, the ratings the party has today, the, all the parties on one side, they realize that they, they are no match for this party. The movement is so powerful today. And that is the reason why this is happening. Because they are now are petrified. The people who removed me are petrified that whenever and elections are supposed to be in October, whenever there are elections, my party will come back into power. Hence, they are trying to completely dismantle the party. I mean, this sort of, how can you put 10,000 people in jail on an arson where a few hundred people were involved? It, it, it was pre-planned. They used the pretext of arson in some buildings, three or four buildings, to just go after the entire party. Having said that, Imran, clearly a number of your supporters have committed acts of violence. I, I'm assuming you wouldn't dispute that. I would, because, you know, in 27 years, never has my party committed acts of violence. We have always told our people to stay within the law. Now, what happened on this, on the 9th, when they, when they abducted me from the precincts of the High Court, and the way they treated me and the, the way the violence and then they treated me like a, a terrorist, which the Supreme Court ruled was unlawful. Obviously, there was a reaction. But the arson, you know, this was not committed by a working, which is why I keep calling for an independent judicial inquiry. Because even when I was shot, nothing like this happened. I mean, surely that is the time when people should have, you know, gone up, burned buildings. But nothing happened. But this was, it was, you know, players, this is what Hitler did in 1933 when the Berlin, uh, in Berlin, when the parliament was burned, he went after the communists and demolished all opposition. This is what's happening right now. Imran, on a human level, you know, I've spoken to you after people tried to kill you and they came very close to killing you. That was just six months ago or so. You've got a family, you've got these two young sons. Uh, you tweeted recently, the only thing I miss these days is hiking in our northern mountains with my sons. And that was a very human thing to tweet. And I, I, as a father of three boys, not dissimilar age uh, to yours now, I, that really resonated with me. How are you doing on a, on a human level? Well, it's a <clears throat> you know, huge sacrifice because what is happening right now is we are basically fighting for rule of law and democracy. On the other hand, we now have, uh, uh, we are heading towards the worst type of dictatorship. It's a banana republic right now, where the judges now are no longer independent. They are threatened. Media is completely muzzled. My name is not allowed to be mentioned on the media. And you can't demolish the biggest political party by, by the, the steps they've taken, these draconian steps. So therefore, what is a threat is our democracy, our future. So there's no, you know, it is a, this has been one of the most toughest years of my life because not just, there wasn't one assassination attempt. On the 18th of March, there was a second assassination attempt. Mm. And not just that, I mean, the cases and the, my workers, actually the worst who are suffering are my workers. They're crammed in these jails. They don't get proper food. And there's, you know, even our lawyers are not allowed to see them. But the, even worse, the women, First time women started participating in politics with my party. First time women took part in peaceful protests. And the way they went after the women, I mean, they are, if you see the, some of the videos of the way they beat up women mm. and they put them in jails who were, or no woman was involved in violence, yet there were hundreds put in jails. Are you able to see your sons? No, I can't. This is too uh, dangerous a time for, for uh, me to ask them to come over. Uh, and, you know, I'm confident that this is, uh, this is not going to last very long because the system cannot take this much longer. The judiciary is, has, is overawed right now. It's cowed down. 
But the judiciary has a, a past 15 years it's asserted its independence. So at the moment, it's, it's you know, the, the, the terror, which is in Pakistan, it's a reign of terror. I mean, people are frightened. People are picked up in the middle of the night. It's like in, in you know, in the, in the Nazi Germany. The police barges into a home, and if they don't find the guy who's, who they're looking for, PTI, and most of them are now hiding or in jail, they pick up relatives. I mean, collective punishment. This, this has never happened in our country before. You know, Imran, each time I talk to you, I, I'm always reminded that, you know, I spent my formative years down at Sussex County Cricket Ground watching you bowling uh, magnificently uh, for Sussex. And you were one of my sort of heroes then, uh, cricketing heroes. Do you ever wish you just hadn't gone into politics? I mean, serious question. Given the impact on your life, <clears throat> the danger, no the threats, the assassination attempts, and so on. Do you ever wish you just, you know, had an easier life? But, Piers, look, in Pakistan, there are two ways. One is when you go into politics as a political career. In my opinion, it is the worst career to ever choose. I would never suggest politics as a career to anyone, as a career. Secondly, is a politics where you, you are so privileged I had more respect than any other Pakistani. And I tried, I, what I wanted to do was, to what I, by the way, what I first saw and admired in England when I went there as a teenager, rule of law. Mm. We never had rule of law in this country because we had dictatorship. Either we had dictation, dictatorship or two families, but they never allowed people to have rule of law where people, fundamental rights were protected. And as a result, the, the country is not, we don't, we never knew freedom, real freedom. First time I saw was in England when I went as a teenager and I discovered how rule of law and fundamental rights liberate a, a, a whole people. So my movement started 27 years ago. I realized that unless we have rule of law, we have no future. So this is a 27 year old mission. But even and if it costs you your, your, your liberty or even your life, it's worth it to you? Well, my life is at serious threat because the worry they are facing is that even if they put me in jail, the popularity of the party has crossed 70% today. Because never has a party been so popular. So they are scared that even if I, I'm in jail, the party would win. Hence, there were these two assassination attempts on me. I would say that the support from world leaders has been pretty deafening with its silence in the main. Do you wish you'd had more vocal support from maybe the British Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak, the American President, Joe Biden? Would that be helpful? Look, you know, Piers, in my three and a half years as Prime Minister, I discovered one thing, that this morality and the, the so-called Western values about democracy, constitutionalism, rule of law, uh, fundamental rights against custodial torture. All that is happening in Pakistan today. Yet, I think the interests of the, the powers, Britain, the US, I think they are more aligned with our military uh, uh, for whatever reasons, maybe because they're supporting them in Ukraine. Um, I always wanted an independent foreign policy because I... 80,000 Pakistanis died when we joined the U.S. war on terror. And I was against it. So I think maybe that they feel that their interests are more served by, by the current regime. And whenever that happens, you know, all these professed values go out of the window. I mean, Rishi Sunak is currently in Washington with President Biden. What, what's your message to both of them if they're watching this? My message is simple. Firstly, countries only... Uh, uh, sort their problems out from within. But the professed values of United States and United Kingdom, I repeat, is democracy, is uh, fundamental rights, rule of law. I mean, whenever they criticize Hong Kong <clears throat> or China with the Uyghurs or Russia, they always talk about the lack of human rights and fundamental rights and lack of democracy. But here... Here's one standing for democracy. And all, this, all these values are being violated. Yet not a word from them.
But, you know, I didn't really expect much. I do what I expected more and is gradually happening in the Western media because the media is really beginning to realize what's going on in this country. Well, Imran, mm -hmm. you will always have uh, a birth on Piers Morgan Uncensored. I've spoken to you numerous times in the last year. It's been a quite extraordinary period in your life. Um, and I'm living it vicariously, sitting here safely in London. I wish you all the very best and hope next time I talk Thank to you, you it's in, uh, in, a, in a slightly calmer circumstance. Inshallah. Thank you.